difficile. How are you this morning? Hey man, listen. Listen, I, I got good news. I can go back to Alvin because the Dallas Cowboys, I know it was a preseason game, but they stomped the Texans last night. And all my friends are Texans, right? So preseason or not, I'm like, hey, man, I'm going to be reminding them about this. So all is good. Acts chapter 1. I invite you to take the, your Bibles and open them to Acts chapter 1. The mission of matters. Acts chapter 1. Now, put your finger in Acts chapter 1, but then turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 40. 1 Corinthians 14, the last verse in chapter 14. 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 40. Let me remind you that Paul was writing 1 Corinthians to the church at Corinth that was one messed up church. In fact, in chapter 1, verse 10, he appeals to them that they agree with one another and that there be no divisions among them. In verse 11, he says, from a, a, a reliable source... There are quarrels among you. Imagine that. I think it must have been a Baptist church way back then. He's dealing with, they're having the Lord's Supper, and it's like a happy hour. He's got the charismatics all out here doing wild and crazy things, and he's trying to, to write to this church, and... And he comes down after talking about spiritual gifts in 12, thir uh, 13, and 14. And in the last verse of chapter 14, but in everything, but everything should be done in a fitting and orderly way. Our God is a God of order. If you go back and read the opening pages of Scripture and about creation in Genesis one and two, our God is a God of order. He has all authority. He can break in. He, he's not bound by anything. He can do whatever he wants to do. But he is a God of order. I know some of you are thinking, okay, what rabbit trail is Howard on this morning? Well, here's the rabbit trail. Just a reminder that under the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you voted to go through the intentional interim spiritual journey. It is an orderly spiritual journey. We started with a sharing time even before we got to focus point one because, quite frankly, I wasn't here an hour till I picked up that there were, well, let's just say that there were issues among some of the members. So we went through a time of people coming into my office and telling me we had a, a sharing time, and, and you shared your concerns with the transition team. All that was cataloged. It was put and, and pigeonholed into the different focus points so that your transition team that you elected and commissioned would address the issues you were concerned about. This process is not top-down, it's bottom-up. We went through the heritage focus point, heard from you about where we were and how we got where we are. Went through the leadership focus point and still uh, ironing out some things there, but made some recommendations to the transition team to the finance committee and personnel committee, and they prayerfully considered, and some of those things, they, you know, uh, many of them, they said, yeah, that's a good idea. And there, was, there were some, they said, you know, we're not ready for that yet. Guess what? That's how this process works. Because the Personnel and Finance Committee took the recommendations, having more information, and prayerfully considered it on your behalf. Hallelujah, that's the way this thing works. Communication and cooperation. We're in the mission focus point, not missions in terms of 
like going on mission trips, but direction and purpose. That's what tonight is all about. We're going to have the West Oak two-step, but I'm going, to, I'm going to come back to that in just a minute. When we finish the mission focus point, before the end of the, before the holiday time, I believe we'll be able to get into the fourth focus point, which is connections. And, you know, I don't want to jump ahead to another sermon and all that, but, you know, it's what the church is connected to financially and in partnerships outside. In the new year, the fifth focus point, we'll be able to prayerfully dive into future, having taken all that we've been through and, and be able to, again, hear from you and form a pastor profile because through this process, we've learned more about West Oak Woods and who we are, and you tell us what kind of pastor you want, pastor profile. Go through the constitutional process, your process, elect a search team, train them, help them connect them to some resources, and they have a game plan knowing who you are and the kind of pastor that would best fit this church, and that typically helps shorten the process of finding a pastor. Now, that is the journey that you guys under the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ, committed to. That's where we're going. But now back to the mission focus point. Tonight, the first step of the West Oak two-step. The ministry checkup event. We're going to have a great time. So just come with a smile on your face and a bounce in your step. We're a family. We're going to eat together. We're going to fellowship together. We're going to do some evaluations together because we love Jesus and we love the church. And some of that won't be easy, but you'll be a simple evaluation tool. And some of you will say, well, if I was forming this tool, I would have done this. But guess what? You didn't form the tool. <laughs> it's imperfect. It's just a tool. But the goal is through our table captains and some discussion to identify from you two or three areas that you say must be strengthened in order for the church to experience revitalization. And then we come back with the, the second step. I don't even know what the two-step is, but, you know, New Beginnings event on October 6th having identified from you the two or three, four areas that you say must be strengthened for our church to grow, we come back with another event and say, give us some ideas, some suggestions, and how would you be willing to be involved in that? Family decisions. Tonight you'll come, and we're going to have fun. You're going to come in, and you're going to get a name tag, and it's going to have an animal on it. We're not going to fight about which animal you have, okay? You, you're going to come in, men, and you're going to be an alpaca, and your wife is going to be a panda. Because we're, we want to have a little bit of fun, and we want people to maybe, you know, you know what your spouse thinks, and you know what those who are close to you think. So we're going to mix it up a little bit. And so if you're a panda, you're going to eat at the panda table. By the way, Chris and Matt, I made an executive decision, and we're moose. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and we're going to eat together, have a great time together. We'll go through this tool, and, and your table captains will share the two or three things that you have identified at your table. Okay? So... Let's just laugh, let's be honest, let's be a family, let's have a good time, and let's allow God to work through us. Amen? Acts 1, verse 8, the mission matters. The gathered church. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Lord Jesus, we love you. 
And we are all here because of you. We owe everything to you. West Oak is yours. And Lord, all of us here want your church to experience revitalization. Help us to hear what you want us to hear and to be humble and to apply and to be willing to be obedient to you. In Jesus' name, amen. The people chosen by the Lord. That's the first thing we note here, but you. The people chosen by the Lord, but you. I'm not a Greek scholar. I had all this Greek stuff in the seminary and all that. And, uh, but I do know this, the you in the Greek New Testament is plural. If Jesus were talking in Texan church, he would say, but y'all. He's talking to Howard. He's talking to Chris and Matt. He's talking to the deacons. He's talking to life group leaders. He's talking to, to children's workers. He's talking to committees. He's talking to everybody. There is no one who is excluded but y'all. Jesus had the gathered church together, and he said, but y'all. At that time, it was the gathered church. Now, now we know in the book of Acts, by the way, this verse 8 is really an outline of the book of Acts. As the church began to grow and develop, and local churches were established. So we are Team Jesus, West Oak Wood. We're we're all of us. We're on a mission team. It's Jesus' team. And Jesus says, but y'all. We, in this locale, with our mission field around us, we are chosen by the Lord. I grew up, of course, as you know, in Alvin. And when I was four, my folks built this home, 700 Briar Grove Drive. And we were one of the first houses in that area, so there were fields around us and dirt roads. And so it was really cool to wander around and all that. I had a great time catching horny toads and... You know, and, well, I can't tell you everything, but, you know, we just had a great time. In the summertime, all the neighborhood kids would get together, and we'd go down to one of the fields, and we'd choose captains, and we'd play baseball or football. And it was always a relief to be chosen. Now, sometimes you wanted to be on another team, and you got chosen, and you were like, ugh because you recognize the better players were on that team. But by and large, it's an honor to be chosen. And Jesus has chosen you and me. The story is told in heaven that an angel was talking to God, and the angel said, how how, how are people going to know about you? And God said, well, I have chosen my people to tell everybody everywhere. And there was silence. And the angel said, what if they don't? Is there a plan B? And God said, no. We're it. We are the people chosen by the Lord. And then we note the power supplied by the Lord. But you, but y'all, will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit for a minute. Every Christian has the Holy Spirit. Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. He had a theological degree. He was a religious man. It was late at night, but he couldn't get this thing down. Jesus dumbed it down, and he said, Nick, look, you've got to be born of water and the Spirit. Water is birth through the birth canal, physical birth, but you have to be born spiritually by the Holy Spirit of God. As Titus says, it's through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. And so when you commit your life to Jesus Christ and believe in Him, His Spirit comes to live in you. For, uh, let's go to, uh, don't go there, I'll tell you about it. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. I'm going to tag this on to last week's sermon. Safe if saved, John 10, 27 through 30. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 says that when you're saved, that the Holy Spirit is the deposit guaranteeing your inheritance to the day of redemption. 
I deal with deposits, earnest money, in real estate. And there on the, the one to four family residential contract, there is a line for earnest money, and typically it's 1%. But guess what? When you're saved, you don't get 1% of the Holy Spirit. You get all the Holy Spirit. And there are times in your life, in my life, when we're walking along with Jesus in relationship with Him, and we're doing what He wants us to do, and we're just kind of chilling out with Jesus and going on in life, and then all of a sudden we'll have an opportunity to serve, we'll encounter a crisis, and, and we will have a power surge by the Holy Spirit of God, and we're able to do that which we could not have done otherwise. The word power here is the word dynamite. We get our word dynamite. It is explosive power. It is, it is dynamic. So we understand even before Jesus gets to the plan, we, we understand that he is not expecting you and me to do what he's going to tell us to do in our own flesh, but he has supplied the power through the indwelling Holy Spirit. We have a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Been on several mission trips to Canada. We had been to uh, the little seaside community of Sydney on Vancouver Island, working with some church planters there. We flew off the island from Victoria to Calgary in a, a little bitty plane. Whew. And we got on a larger plane, and we're flying back from Calgary to Houston. And I'm sitting by the king of mission trips, Gilbert. Gilbert's in his 70s. He's been on more mission trips than anybody I ever, than anybody I know. And he was having knee problems and everything. And I said, Gilbert, I'm not going on this trip without you because you're the king of mission trips. And we're flying back, and Gilbert is over there by the window, and I'm sitting by him. And, and I just sort of casually look over there, and Gilbert has his phone out. And I said, Gilbert, what are you doing? Oh, I'm checking email and this, that, and the other. I said, Gilbert. Your phone is supposed to be on airplane mode. He said, well, I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't know how to do that. I said, Gilbert, you've flown all over the world and you don't know. I said, give me your phone. You're breaking the law. He's like, calm down, Howard. <laughs> I flip it on to airplane mode and he says, well, I can't get my email. I said, No. When your phone is on airplane mode, you still have a phone, you still have power, right? And there's some things you can do, but you don't have all the power to be able to have all the cellular data to make phone calls and emails and text messages and all that, right? Too many Christians and too many churches are operating spiritually on airplane mode. And we and we wonder why that God is not blessing and there's not fruit. the people chosen by the Lord, the power supplied by the Lord, and the plan. We finally get to the plan adopted by the Lord. But you will receive power. I like y'all. But y'all will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on y'all, and y'all will be my witnesses. The word witness is a legal term. So when you get called in court to be a witness and you're on the witness stand and you're cross-examined, your job is to tell what you know. 
You tell what you've heard. You tell what you've seen. You tell what you have experienced. Jesus says, y'all team West Oak, Woods, Baptist Church, that this is the plan. That y'all will be witnesses for me. That you will be a people sharing Jesus with everybody everywhere. There are all kinds of different churches, shapes and sizes, and they're organized differently, and they have different music, and some pastors are in T-shirts and sandals, and some are in suits, and, you know, it's just, you know, every kind of church there is. That I'm talking about good conservative churches that are growing. And if there was a copycat thing, then we could all just do the same thing and the church would grow. But you know the number one thing? It's when members share their faith and invite people to church. Bingo. Because over the course of time, churches begin to get very inward, and it becomes about the members rather than the lost. And all our friends are Christians. It's not intentional. It happens that way. And, and we're not sharing our faith, and we're not telling people about Jesus, and we're not, we're not inviting people. And the church can become a dead sea rather than a river of life. My toes are bloody, all right? They're bruised, they're battered, my nails are off. Because I need to do a better job in my life of being a witness for Jesus Christ. You know, some of you, I just feel it. You're already crawfishing. Some of you are like Moses. You got the Moses syndrome. And Moses, you know, saw the burning bush and it was on fire but not consumed. And God said, I've chosen you, Moses, and you're going to be my witness. You're going to go to Egypt. You're going to stand before Pharaoh and you're going to lead my people, right, out of Egypt. And Moses said, who, me? Uh, God, I'm on the back, I'm hiding in the desert. I gave up this public life stuff. And I, I stammer, and I'm not a good speaker. Who, me? Others of you are like Jonah. God called Jonah to to go to a foreign country and to preach in the capital city of Nineveh. And instead of saying, who me? Jonah said, not me. Uh Uh-uh, buddy. Got on a boat and went in the other direction. By the way, that's a dangerous thing to do because you might end up in the belly of a whale. (laughs) Others of you are like Habakkuk. Say, well, who is that? What's that? Well, it's a book in the Bible. Minor prophet. Habakkuk was like, why me? Whining. We need to be like Isaiah. A young man, chapter 6, God said, who who am I going to send and who's going to go for me? And Isaiah said, reporting for duty, God. Here am I, send me. Don't know how it's going to happen. Don't know how, what it's going to look like. Don't know how I'm going to do it. I'm just a young guy, but I'm volunteering for Team God, and I'm all in. Here am I. Send me. So we have, we have the people chosen by the Lord and the power supplied by the Lord, and we have the plan adopted by the Lord, and we have the places indicated by the Lord. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. By the way, that's the outline of the book of Acts, how the church grew. I must share with those in my world, my Jerusalem, family, home, immediate relatives, Those you know real well, 
We're talking about Oscar Thompson wrote a book. I read it when I was in seminary. He died of cancer. He was a seminary professor, uh, concentric circles of concern. So you start with your Jerusalem. Your Jerusalem is, is your home and your immediate friends and family. Do they know that you're a Christian? Are they not Christians? Have, have you talked to them about the Lord? I must dare to reach beyond my world. Now we're talking about school, students. We're talking about work, employees. You know, it's an amazing thing, this thing called conversation. When you're in school, when you're at work, people will, you know, your coworkers will talk to you, and eventually over time, they're going to say, man, I'm going through a tough time. My wife's got cancer. I'm having trouble with my kids. What an open door. Let me tell you what not to do. Don't trump their story with your story. It happens all the time, and I just want to, you know, I just want to take my belt off and, and spank the person, you know, like they're a child. You know what, one of the greatest witnessing tools is the, on the anatomy is this thing right here. What is this called? What do we do with this thing? We hear, we listen, right? So when somebody is having a hard time, and listen, one of the great things you can do to show compassion and love is to listen empathetically. And you may have had a similar experience, but they don't want to hear it. Don't trump their story by going into a, a, a rant about what you went through and everything. You, you will shut them down. Listen, and just you can humbly, gently say, guess what? I went through a similar thing, and I don't think I'd have made it without Jesus. I'm a Christian, and the promises of God's Word, and my church family loved me, encouraged me, prayed for me, and I'll be praying for you. And if the opportunity is there where you can, just say, let me have a little prayer for you. And if you want to talk more about it sometime, my door's open. Call me. Here's my cell number. And then, and then, I must care about the whole world. We, we have a team leaving on Saturday, September the 21st, going to Puerto Rico. Because this church cares about the whole world. They're going to go and do some construction stuff. They're going to maybe meet some needs and all that. But that's just, you know, window dressing for the opportunity to tell people about Jesus Christ. We have, we give our money. We have partnerships. I'm going to get ahead into that fourth focus point if I'm trying not to. But why do we do all that? Because we care about the whole world. So that's the plan and, and the period. The period given by the Lord, well, it's Matthew 28, 20, that last verse in Matthew, until the end of the age. Until you die and go to heaven or until Jesus comes again. So that's it. The American Heritage Dictionary, one of its definitions of missions is very simply the business of a body of people that a body of persons has been charged with. This is it. This is it. This is the mission that matters most to Jesus Christ. It is personal, so it's for me and Alvin Wherever I go, and it's for you, wherever you go, it's corporate. And part of what we're going through in this mission focus point is how can we be a little more focused and have everybody kind of get on the page and say, we need to focus in these areas so that we can better do the mission that matters most to Jesus. And it must be done cooperatively. 
What a novel idea. Again and again, the Bible talks about being in agreement, being like-minded, being unified. I've told you before, and I'll say it again, I've told you when she's not here, but I'll tell you with Lavana being here, she and I do not always agree. And we, when we do not agree, I do what she wants. <laughs> we can't all have our way, but we have to come together and say, Let's try this for the glory of Jesus Christ and the advancement of the kingdom of God. You're going to come tonight, and it's going to be like a game. We have some good friends, Ken and Ann. We're going to get together with them again on Friday night, and when we get together with them, we play games. I'm not a big game player. They are. Lavana is. They taught us this crazy game called Jokers and Pegs. And last time we, we played at our house, I made a move across the board, and they were like, you can't do that. I'm like, why? That's a great move. It's against the rules. <laughs> yeah, got my hand slapped. There are going to be some ground rules tonight that I'll share with you and your table captains. Don't make me put you in timeout in the corner. That would be totally embarrassing. Come on. There's a method to the madness. I love you. I pray every day, every night, every morning for the power of the Holy Spirit to bring us together and bring revitalization to this awesome church that has had such a great history of planting gospel seeds. This is the mission that matters most to Jesus. Does it matter to you? God, we love you. We praise you. You're an awesome God. We look to you. We lean on you. You are our strong, high tower. You are the rock that is higher than I. You are our only foundation. You are our living hope. You are a God with nothing with you is impossible. And God, we ask you to move in a mighty way in the days to come. Lord, that you might use us to bring glory to you and reach people for you. God, I pray for tonight that, Lord, it would be a fun time and that we would laugh and have a good time. But because we love each other and we love you and we love the church, that we would be willing to cooperate in, in this tool to try to be helpful in moving ahead and use it, God, to advance your kingdom. And thank you for these wonderful people who do love you and they do have relationships that go back decades. They love one another. They've supported one another. I've seen it through difficult times. They've embraced Lavana and myself. And, and God, we just, we're all in on building the kingdom here and, and fading and handed off to the person that you have to be their permanent pastor. Lead us, Lord, today to make decisions that would honor you to be more aware and conscious and willing to share our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand, let's sing, let's commit ourselves to Christ. If you're here and you feel led to move your membership to this awesome church, come on up, we'll talk about that. If you are here and you want to talk about becoming a Christian and having the Lord Jesus Christ through his spirit in you and being saved and being heaven bound, I'd be glad to talk to you and pray with you. Let's sing. Let's sing to the Lord. Mm -hmm.